Well, here's the start of what I hope will be a successful build with another Xeon project on the way here. This is an MSI motherboard, an X58A GD45. This is a X58 chipset motherboard. And as you may have guessed it already, this is an LGA 1366. Now, got a little bit of a story to tell as to why I got this. You see, my i5, unfortunately, the water block decided to go ahead and start leaking. Well, it decided to leak onto the video card, and it probably did that for a good week or so. Well, one day I was using the computer in the middle of doing something there, and the computer just shut off and then turned back on, and it was never going to boot up again. Unfortunately, the uh, i2550K processor has been fried. I don't know if the motherboard has survived or not, because I do not have another LJ1155 processor to put into it. Um, I put the processor into about four other motherboards, trying to see if it was any good, and none of those boards came up either. So I think the processor got zapped since the video card, <coughs> uh, the first PCI Express slot, is fed directly to the processor so I think the processor pretty sure the processor got killed I'm hopeful the motherboard's still good but so given the fact the processors are hard to find and kind of expensive I figured to try to do another kind of a mod sort of speak anyway so I found this little gem on eBay for about 50 bucks 60 if you count shipping and I also found out these LGA 1366 motherboards fetch quite a premium on eBay, which surprises the hell out of me. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I ordered a Xeon processor for this. And it's actually a Xeon. Let's see if I can get it in the light here and to get it to focus. X5672. This is a 3.2 gigahertz, 12 meg cache version. This is what's going to hopefully be living in this motherboard. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, concerned me when I first looked at this are the pins. But I think the pins are okay. There is some kind of grime on those pins, you can see. And hopefully, I'll be able to clean that off with some contact cleaner. I don't know what the heck went on with this board you can see more of the grime and filth right there there's also this black I don't know I guess it's thermal compound I suppose that could be arctic silver that was just put on way 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 too much and wiped off inappropriately but uh, <coughs> this motherboard was listed as is the seller said he found it in a computer in a storage shed, and the computer did not have a power supply in it, and he supposedly didn't have the ability to power this on with another uh, power supply. Although, the curious thing is, this motherboard came in a Sabertooth X58 box, so I don't know if that was in the storage shed or if that's something he had. But uh, anyway, I think the first thing we're going to do, and this may require having to send this motherboard through a trip to the old dishwasher but I'm gonna to try to clean this socket out with some electrical contact cleaner right there hello Raven box and um, we'll see where we can go from there hopefully the contact cleaner will be enough to clean off whatever grime there is on here but if we have to stick this baby in the dishwasher I guess we will hopefully once I get those pins cleaned we'll be able to examine those pins a little bit closer and hopefully if there is one or two of them that are damaged, hopefully there are uh, a couple pins that are insignificant to the processor functionality because there are redundant pins in these sockets. Um, and just as a backup to the Xeon, I have here an i7-920 that we ordered at the shop for another person. I have tested this and this is a working processor. The Xeon on the other hand, I tested on the same HP motherboard and uh, the HP motherboard did not like this processor so that's why I got that processor brought it home just in case for some reason this motherboard decides it doesn't like the Xeon I at least have a known working processor to test this motherboard out with while I'm doing all this so um, anyway let's go ahead and try to clean this motherboard up and see what we've got at that point
Well, here's a site we haven't seen for a few videos now. Me in my bathroom. Yes, this is my bathroom, and we are cleaning the motherboard. What's nice about this contact cleaner, and I picked this stuff at Menards for seven bucks. This stuff is pretty well, pretty good at cleaning solvents as well. So if there's any kind of grease residue on this thing, which kind of looks to me like there is, hopefully this will wash it all off. Um, so already done a little bit on the processor socket and it's amazing how much cleaner that looks already and I'm putting the motherboard in this position so that uh, if there's anything in here that's going to hopefully wash down instead of going down this way on the board and get into all these little spots and stuff like that in between the north bridge chip here the pins and stuff like that so I'm just trying to save some crap from getting in there too far clean that off right away Holy cow. we may end up having to send this through the dishwasher anyway but uh, we'll do this first and see what we've got the bad thing about this contact cleaner is it doesn't really seem to touch dirt very well I don't know why that is but we get all these memory slots out of here cleaned out here Looks like we do have a SATA 3 header, which is nice. Don't fall over, motherboard. Get in there, that BGA processor there, and try to clean out between the pins as best I can, just in case there's any kind of grind in there. South Bridge 2 here. Just flood this sucker as much as I can. Alright, let's see what we've got here now. Oh, look at all that crap. Yeah, there's still a little bit of grime in the socket, but that's definitely looking a little bit better. You can see how much dirt there is on this board that the contact cleaner is just not washing off. So we may end up having to throw this in the dishwasher. Unfortunately, I kind of wanted don't want to do that because I'd like to test this board right away. <clears throat> but you know, we got to do what we got to do. Actually, though, if I can get this motherboard working, and it's actually a good working board, this uh, would be a hell of a find on eBay. Of course, if it doesn't work, then it's going to be 50 bucks, 60 bucks out of my pocket, but I figured it was worth it. You know, people buy these things even for parts, so I could probably resell it. I may have to resell it at a loss if I do that, but... Especially in this voltage regulation section here, get that grime out of there. I'm starting to run out to a military class. Well, we'll find out, I suppose, if it survives all this. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to throw this in the dishwasher just to be on the safe side. Now, yeah, maybe I'll let it dry for a little bit and just test it real quick. Hmm. Well, we'll see here in a minute. Well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, I'm actually rather surprised. Now, I had to put the i7 chip in there, not the Xeon. But, uh, check this out. Oh, I gotta turn the power supply back on. <clears throat> there we go. And would you check this out? Come on. <laughs> wow. Sweet! The motherboard actually works. <laughs> That's awesome. That is just totally, totally awesome that that motherboard actually works. Sweet. 
Sweet, sweet, sweet. Now I gotta figure out why it doesn't work with the Xeon chip. That HP didn't work with this chip either. I sure hope this chip's not bad. Pulled from servers, so I, and I know I've seen people running these Xeons with these X58 chips, so chipset so I don't know what's going on with that but that's sweet that that is working <clears throat> so now how do I want to do this because I gotta find a cooler for this thing and the sick thing is that I had a cooler for this it was a pretty kick-ass Intel cooler too too but I think I may have ended up throwing that away so I was like I'll never have a LGA 1366 motherboard shoot uh, I'm gonna have to rig something up probably I wonder if that cooler down there will fit the LGA 1366 I'll have to try that so I wonder if the Xeon just needs to have a BIOS update to make that work or what's going going on with that I'm gonna have to google that a little bit I guess but uh, the big hurdle is over. The motherboard is alive. Of course, who knows how stable it is, because I haven't gotten that far yet, but uh, making progress so far. Looking at the... Uh, socket through my magnifying glass here uh, there was an impressive number of pins that were kind of bent over a little bit into the wrong places but surprisingly as you saw the processor still worked this motherboard does have the latest BIOS on it uh, so I'm not sure yet why the Xeon chip didn't work in the in the uh, i7 did so hopefully hopefully I have something to do with some of these bent pins here so I'm going to go through these and uh, finish straightening some of these out. I got the ones along uh, there's my big ass finger on this side of the socket pretty well straightened out. I'm gonna go across the top here. I think the other sides are okay. Um, there was a chunk of crap in here I picked out but I'm gonna go through the top section of pins up here and uh, there's a couple in here you can see that look a little smushed over so uh, they weren't uh, smashed down anything. They were just kind of bent out of alignment a little bit. So uh, I think we'll be good to go with that here. Get that all straightened out and we'll give it another test with a Xeon chip here. You never know when the bent leg of a spare voltage regulator will come in handy. Works perfect for picking those little pins right there and moving them around a little bit. Absolutely perfectly. So I ended up running back to work there and uh, Found a heat sink that's an LGA 1366 that I had laying around. No, I'm not a terribly huge fan of these Intel stock coolers. This is definitely more heat sink than uh, the i7s come with nowadays, that's for sure. There's some good weight to this thing. <clears throat> I don't know what I did with that other Intel cooler that I had, because it was really nice. Because It actually had LEDs on it. It said Intel on it. It was... Uh, a tall heat pipe style heat sink. It was pretty nice, but uh, this will work perfectly, at least for temporary, till I uh, get the water block replaced on my water cooled PC. Combination of straightening those pins and a little music from Chris Isaac right now. The Xeon is working, so let me go ahead and get that heat sink back on here, and we'll have a little fun in the BIOS. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. Oh yeah. That looks nice. Not why these cameras have such a hard time focusing on these LCD monitors. Nine SATA ports plus one E SATA. Wow. Yeah, so that's going to be a nice little processor to have fun with right there. Me love Xeons. 
I figured this would be a good one to compare to to the uh, LGA 771 Xeon. It's kind of why I got it since this has a 12 meg cache. This was also $65 on eBay as opposed to the anywhere from $85.90 to like $150 for the other uh, 12 meg cache version Xeons. Uh, in fact, 3.4 gigahertz, 3.6 gigahertz, I think I saw. It's like 150 bucks. I said, yeah. So I was kind of thumbing around, and you know, I'm kind of an eBay warrior. So I was kind of thumbing around looking at the different models of Xeons, and this one, 3.2 gigahertz, was actually the cheapest of the 12 megabyte ones. And uh, the uh, 3 gigahertz was actually $10 more than this one, believe it or not. I couldn't tell you why, but this seller had like eight of them. And I bought the last one, so <clears throat> sweet. I'm glad to see that's working. So there's a few pins on the socket after I straightened them out. There's three or four of them that the little the little finger that comes up like that, the little finger was actually broken off, so it's just kind of like half sticking up. But I bent it up enough to where it should be making contact with the processor, but even if it's not, apparently it doesn't matter because it's working right now anyway flawlessly now flawlessly who knows I gotta get mem tests going I've got to get an operating system on a hard drive and things like that because right now I'm just gonna bench test this sucker here and see what we get but uh, so far I'm quite astounded that for 50 bucks plus 65 for the processor okay that's called 120 bucks I was able to get this combination for less than most LGA uh, 1366 motherboards cost by themselves on eBay. Yes, I had to do a little bit of work. Yes, it was a little bit of a risk, but thankfully it paid off. So, CPU temperature is way too high for my liking, but that's about where I would expect it to be. This is going to be water cooled, so that doesn't matter. 1.15 volts. Yeah, that's awfully warm for that low of voltage. Hmm. But then again, that stock cooler is not really doing a whole lot. The thermal compound on the cooler doesn't seem to be um, gelling and adhering to the processor. Although, I just put it on minutes ago, so it's probably not had a chance to heat up enough and warm up and melt and goo and things like that. But uh, I'm sure some Arctic Silver would improve that. But like I said, this is just a temporary heat sink. I do need to, uh, and I do apologize for my coughing, I have a little bit of a cold. But I am going to need to put a fan on that Northbridge, Joe. It's, uh, it's kind of warm. It's weird because this heat sink, this, it must be the thermal compound or something, because that, that's definitely not 136 degrees. I mean, that, that heat sink's not even hot. If that thing was nearly 100, if it was 58 degrees Celsius, I would be uncomfortable touching that. Hmm. Oh, well, I wonder if these Intel chips, if these ones had any issues with the integrated heat spreader being uh, not correctly applied to the core. I know Intel had problems with that for a while. That they weren't getting a very good contact because they literally solder that cap onto the core and they weren't getting a very good uh, I don't know if it was solder or the solder breaks or maybe too much solder or something like that but there wasn't good heat con heat transfer between the core and the integrated heat sink he uh, heat spreader with that for on some of these I wonder if this one could be one of those that's affected by that because I I would expect the Xeon to run, well, that's not the right one. I would expect the Xeon to run a little bit uh, cooler than that. Being Xeons are supposed to be better bin chips. But anyway, this is, this is you need it here nor there. All right, cool. Pointless to save it, but why not? So I'll get a hard drive hooked up to this. I'm gonna have to find, uh, Maybe I'll just boot off a Linux disk for now. I'll figure something out here to test this with. Oh, what is this doing? Oh. Never mind. 
If you watch fellow YouTube user Max Arcade's videos, you may have seen the recent video that he did on the i7-950, I believe it was, and the woes that he experienced in that build. And this is one, that, that video gives a pretty good uh, example as to why I like to um, <clears throat> bench test the motherboard and stuff instead of putting it in a case, because I can't tell you how many times I've bought in a motherboard and a processor and RAM and assumed it was good, even in a laptop, put it all together and found out it was not too good. So that's why I like to go ahead and do a, an open uh, bench test, so to speak, of all my hardware. <clears throat> when I watched that video, this stuff was still on order, I'm still waiting for it to come. And I sat there saying to myself, Man, what did I get myself into? But, with a few bent pins and a dirty socket and everything else this poor motherboard was has been in, in through, into, in through, whatever you want, been through the last, you know, however long it's been since it was new, it seems to be working still. So, uh, I don't know. It seems like it's a pretty rugged build uh, motherboard to me. I mean, I know this isn't the same motherboard, obviously, but LGA thirteen sixty six. You know, seems like it's a pretty rugged thing. I, I don't know. This is the first one I've had personally. Now I've built a couple. I built a six core monster for a doctor. Charged him six grand to do it. And that computer is still rocking strong, and I used an ASUS motherboard on that one. And I usually prefer to stick to ASUS because I've had the least amount of problems with them not saying I haven't had problems with them it's been a long time since I've actually had an MSI board so this one was just it was cheap it was 50 bucks it was worth a gamble and this time the gamble paid off I've I've got to say I'm quite happy so yeah, that's all I have to say about that I might go ahead and throw this in the in black beauty case or I don't know we'll see I need to find some more RAM though. Hmm. I think these motherboards support a 24 gig of RAM. I wonder if that's true with the Xeon chips as well because I've got some 8 gig DDR3 memory sticks. And they're not gaming sticks, but they would be plenty fine for this until I actually got around to buying some, uh, probably some G Skill, I'm thinking. I'd like to max this thing out to 24 gig of RAM if that is in fact the max, but I'll have to see here. Maybe I'll try throwing one of those sticks in here and just see.